Meanwhile, on the comic box, thwip, thwip, kick it, splat, splat, (laughs) kick it, Liam. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does stuff just like spiders. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. Okay. They'll do things. (laughs) Welcome to the comic box. Part of the geek to geek Podcast Network, I am Rob, your friendly neighborhood comic geek. I am joined by the life-saving Liam O'Rourke. I do like lifesavers. Yeah. Well, you saved your own life the other night by That's deciding true. to actually drink Hydrate. water. Yes. Yep. Our friend Liam had a, Hydrate, folks. A, 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 Hydrate. a quick trip to a hospital for not hydrating himself enough. And uh, uh, Anyway, coffee doesn't count. I know it's made with water. The caffeine. But it's not, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. This week we are talking Spider-Man. This is our Spider-Man Homecoming prep episode, and I am very glad that Liam is joining me this week. We should call it a rally if it's a homecoming. This, well, that's, that'll be next week. Our review will be the uh, the rally. Yeah, there you go. Your invisible pom-poms. But this is good because uh, I want to talk the previous Spider-Man films, why we need Spider-Man to keep coming back, uh, and if it was just that, the last couple movies weren't needed because they tried rebooting and, you know, it worked or didn't work. And I have not seen either of those, but you have seen both. I have seen every Spider-Man movie to date. I don't know that I believe you. I'm going to, we're going to argue about that when we get to it, but I want to do news very quickly. I have like three news stories to do, um, but it is important that we do them. So we are going to go... News. <laughs> All right. Uh, in no particular order. Remember how we were talking about the Venom movie? Mm-hmm. And the only way we would actually enjoy a Venom movie? You mean like if they put a good character cast into it? And really a solid actor? Well, we we know we have Tom Hardy playing Venom. Mm-hmm. But we were saying, why is Spider-Man not like, what are you going to do with this movie? Yeah. And our only thought was... You, you gotta have Spider-Man or you gotta have Carnage. Yes. It is going to be a Carnage? It's going to be a Carnage movie. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still waving my flag. Jackie Earl Haley. Oh, Give me a good. Jackie Earl Haley Carnage. Oh, Please. yeah. Please. Please. Yeah. I loved him as Rorschach. So, yeah. Yeah. Which and I know it, he's Freddy, and I know that's... Yeah, in the some reboot. Like he did it, a, so they don't. I thought but... he did a really good job. Like, I know Robert Englund is Freddy Krueger, but... Yeah. Getting back to, like, the original of him being scary instead of this giant pop culture icon. I yeah. thought he did a good job. Uh, but speaking of Rorschach, Watchmen. We're getting a new Watchmen, but it's going to be a series on HBO. And okay. it's being made by um, Damon Lindelof or whatever. The guy that made Lost. Oh. Or helped make Lost, right? Because it was J.J. Abrams or whatever. But yeah, so one of the guys that, that did that, and he's done a couple other things. That was just the one that I, I wrote down. But I'm seeing a lot of really good reactions to this news on Twitter. People saying, yes, a series on HBO. You know they're going to put the money into it. The fact that it's a series and they're not trying to pack it into one movie. This is the right format in which to try and tackle Watchmen. You are a huge Alan Moore fan. You're a big Watchmen fan. I am. What do you think about it? Is it still beyond the visual medium of television or, or film, the way that the stories are interwoven? You know, I it, if you were if you're just going to do like a panel for panel for page per page, like recreation of Watchmen, yeah, and just do it in a moving picture. Yeah. You still couldn't, though, because part of Watchmen is pages of yeah, it's the like Night Owl's the black, book. Yeah. And yeah, and then the kid reading the, the Black Freighter comic book. Yeah. And the whole point is it's a comic in a comic, but they have the pages of the chapters of the, is it Under the Mask or whatever the... Yeah. The, 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 guy's the Owl's... Uh, Night Owl's bi- actual... Biography. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it, it, it would be difficult to do, but... If you're doing more like a series that's set in that world wherein the events of Watchmen take place and we have those characters. Okay. Um, but, you know, you see maybe a little more than what's actually literally in the panels in the printed Watchmen. Sure. You know? um, I think I, they'd I, have to. Yeah, yeah I, I, I could see that being enjoyable. I could see that being well made, given yeah. that it's an HBO thing 
Which know? it is. I mean, you figure they throw Westworld money at it, Game of Thrones money at it, and really produce the heck out of it. Yeah. Uh, then they, I could see it. Yeah, they don't make a lot of cheap television. I no. Mean, their cheap is like Curb. You know? Well, and the and the stand up specials, yeah, basically. But you also have to remember that in the world of Watchmen, there is only one person that actually has superpowers. So when it comes to special effects and stuff, it's mostly explosions and things. Now, now Zack Snyder did, I think, a pretty good job of bringing some of those um, panels directly to life, mm-hmm. um, and did I thought a really good job of some of it. Like I actually thought Watchmen was pretty good. I actually enjoy that yeah. movie. Uh, I've never seen the director's cut, which I know is longer and stuff, but. Yeah being a fan of of the comic and seeing some of those panels brought directly to life so mm-hmm. i don't know how much we'll see that here i don't think they're going to over stylize it which i thought was appropriate for watchmen mm-hmm. um i just hope we don't get there's that whole before watchmen or whatever they call yeah. it the prequel comics i read a did. couple of those and was like nope not for me i never touched them yeah i just i only read some of the rorschach ones because i yeah. like that character so much but you get a good origin story for him. Like, within yeah. Watchmen, you get the origin of, like, That's well, all his really awful need. childhood. Yeah. But then you find the difference of where he goes from this sort of batman as investigator kind of character. Yeah, the question, which is who he was based on. Yeah. Because um, all of them were kind of based on Charleston Comics characters. Yep. To Rorschach. Yeah, to where he actually finally snaps and realizes that really hurting people or even killing criminals is okay in yeah. his mind. But, yeah, that's happening. So that's neat. Uh, we're also getting another sort of revitalization. Mask of the Phantasm is coming to Blu-ray. Okay. The Batman animated yep. series considered by some. There's actually uh, a guy I follow on YouTube. He's a YouTube creator. Uh, Patrick Willem or something like that. Also loves comics. He's the guy that did like, what if Tama Wu So directed Batman? And uh, I guess their most popular one is what if... Oh, now I blanked on his name. Like Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou and... Oh, Wes Royal Anderson? Tenem. Yeah, what if Wes Anderson directed the X-Men is the one that I think he has the most. He's got a couple million on that one. That yeah, one went viral. That one. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, I love his Tommy Wuso as Batman because it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> but I like his videos, and uh, he's a big comic book nerd as well. And he did a video on why he thinks Mask of the Phantasm is the best Batman movie of all time and will probably always be the best Batman movie of all time because they wrote the heck out of it. Uh, it's got an amazing plot. It hits Batman in all the right ways. And it actually redefines his backstory a little bit uh, because it brings Bruce Wayne to a point where he's actually realizes he's happy and is going to quit being Batman uh, until everything, of course, falls apart. Uh, plus, it has some of the best Joker stuff in there as well. Mark Hamill's Joker in that is absolutely fantastic. I think that's the one where he just keeps laughing while everything is burning around them. Just, it's great. And it gets dark and... Um, so that comes out on Blu-ray, so obviously they're doing a full remastering of it. Nice. I feel like that's kind of weird to see, you know, the animation of the time. but uh, yeah. And it's expected that it's going to have both the 16x9, because it was in theaters, mm-hmm. so that they'll have both the 16x9 and the 4x3 versions of what you would have seen on your television, you know, back yeah. when it was first released. Uh, so I don't know how much that's going to cost, but that's coming out at some point in July. So that's going to be fun. That's a fried, just shut up and take my money kind of moment. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Last piece of news while we're talking about Batman. Wow. This was in a random order, but it really kind of flowed from one to the other, didn't it? Um, there was that animated 1966 Batman cartoon, you know, Return of the Dynamic Duo or whatever that oh, came out a while ago. Yep. Well, they were making a sequel and Adam West did finish all of his recording before he passed away. So as kind of a wonderful, I mean, not wonderful, but sort of a cherry on top uh, for his career is everyone will get one last Batman performance, albeit just in voiceover, but one last Batman performance out of Adam West mm-hmm. uh, post-mortem. And I think that's very cool. That is cool. I'm, that, that will be fun. It will. I haven't seen the other one. I imagine it's a blast. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't seen it. No, I, I got Fletch forever ago for, and we were trying to remember what it was for uh, and couldn't if it was a birthday or Christmas or something. But I got him the first season of the 66 Batman show on DVD. And the last time I went to go visit him in New York, uh, which must have been, boy, that must have been a couple of years ago now uh, when I went out there for um, 
my 30th birthday, I took a trip out there to knock a item off my bucket list. Totally off topic. I went to go see Lord of the Rings in concert, and it was awesome. It was Howard Shore there and all that. Uh, but we watched like two episodes, and like that's it. Like that's what I've seen in the last I don't know however many years. So yeah. it might have to become a, a thing just to get back in that mood. Um, but yeah, that's very cool. And this one is... Um, a movie where they fight Two Face, which apparently was like a lost episode that they were going to do of the '66 Batman and never did. It was okay. a Two Face episode, nice. and they actually did a comic book of it. There's the Batman '66 comic, and I believe they did a Two Face issue or whatever. But the idea of what a 1966 Two Face would look like, because you couldn't really do crazy because it's on television in the '60s. You know, I bet he looks like a Puerto Rican. Like the Klingons on Star Trek. Oh, okay. I was really wondering where you were going there. You were, you scared me for a second. Okay. He just has a, sl- a little bit of a, a hair lip. Yeah. You know, he has a very short, flat haircut. You know? But he has to do the half face. Yeah. They probably just painted a color. He'll have one eye that dif- is different shade. Yeah. 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 Okay. Topic of the week then? Indeed. Great. But first this. <gasps> I'm Void. And I'm Beach. And together we're the geek to geek podcast. Well, we make it. It is kind of us, but I guess it's separate. Every week, we pick a topic from geek or digital culture and chat about it for a while. And you're invited. We talk about books and movies, games, comics, the internet. Or really whatever we feel like. Yeah, that too. So look for the geek to geek podcast on iTunes. Or wherever your podcasts are sold. Or downloaded. Or whatever. And we're back. Random, obviously things star ratings and reviews i was over i was hanging with uh some guy named matt the other night we went and watched john wick 2 and um well i guess we didn't do weekly geekery no did you enjoy it i did i thought john wick 2 was good not as much as the first one but obviously it ups everything in the second movie yeah and so it was still very impressive yeah um and the physicality of it oh absolutely yes like it was a fun movie to watch yes it was But uh, he pointed out how annoying it is that every time we do the commercial, we come back and go, hey, did you know? <laughs> he, he told me he's he's had enough of that, and it's about time to, to do something else. Okay. So, um, hey, did you know? Screw you, some guy named Matt. Hey! Hey. No. Um, star ratings and reviews. We need to come up with something to do for the month of July. We need to come up with a goal, uh, because this will air the first weekend in July. So... Uh, I think we're still just under 20. So let's say if we get 25 reviews, written reviews, and star ratings on iTunes for our show, The Comic Box. If you, I don't know why you wouldn't know the name of the show you're listening to right now. We need to do a thing. Should we just reiterate what we were going to do before? Where we we have a few cocktails and watch, you know the Roger Corman Fantastic Four or or whatever and record a comic box by night episode. That sounds good to me. Or is there something else we could do for people? I don't know what. Um yeah. I watch Electra. Yeah. Yeah. Do a commentary track Catwoman. on Electra or Catwoman. <laughs> Catwoman is trending right now on Netflix, by the way. I saw that. Yeah. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I do not know. And here's my problem with the new Netflix thing. You know it has like half a star rating, but now Netflix does what they think pairs with you. So I have like a 97% pairing because it's just listed as a comic book movie. Yeah. That's not okay. No, it's not. That's not okay. It's yeah. got uh, Sharon Stone in it. No, Nobody wants to see that in the modern era. <laughs> Well, we'll say, I don't know, we'll get up to 25. I tell you what, everybody, start working towards 25. And then maybe we'll confirm it by yeah, this our is Spider-Man on you. review. Yeah, this is all you. Get off your duffs. And yeah, if there's something you guys want us to do, then that's fine. I just really want to do a comic box after dark episode because I love the idea that people think I am this very uh, kind, mild mannered, well spoken person. Because I loved the comment of, if you guys do this, the first thing I want to hear is Rob dropping the f bomb. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Man, I'm going to wash my own mouth out with soap. It's sweet when it happens, let me tell (laughs) you. So, star ratings and reviews. That's it. And Mm -hmm. Weekly Geekery, I don't know. I don't have a whole lot. I've I've been reading um, random comics and what was it that I was working through? I don't think there's anything that I finished that I worked through. I finished the the Walt Simonson um, Thor. There was a, a, a Thor big 
thing, not Marvel masterpieces or whatever, but it had like the better Ray Bill origin story. And I think maybe the origin story of, of Malekith, the accursed, but it's him in the casket of never renting winter or winter or whatever that the, the whole plot from the second Thor movie, basically. Um, and I read all of that and beyond just doing my best to keep up with comics, like I don't really think there's much for me. I saw John wick two. That's and I with which they're doing a comic book uh, prequel, so they're doing an origin story in nice. comic book form. Uh, I think that's really going to depend on the artist they get. I'm yeah. sure they announced it. I didn't look. Um, but yeah, I don't really have anything else movie wise. I haven't. I've been busy. Yeah, work's been stupid busy, and I've been going up to the cabin to fix up my cabin. Mm-hmm. That's it. I don't know. Did you have anything special is it comic oh, yeah. related? Not well, geekery yeah. related. Um, I have never seen the Jurassic Park series beyond the original oh. until this weekend. Okay. So now I have seen 2, 3, and Jurassic World. Yeah. I would say my second favorite is probably the third one. See, yeah. I, I, it's more of a... It feels more like the first one did. Yeah. Um, Where the second one is like, she can do gymnastics for some reason. Look, we came up with an excuse for her to do gymnastics. Yeah. Though I will say that this, was ridiculous. The scene in the bus thing as it's as it's hanging off the cliff. Yeah. Good. That like that, that was the was one moment that really sort of harkens back and you're like more of this. Yeah. And I liked uh Rebel Saboteur um uh Vince Vaughn. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So and it it had things that I liked. Yeah. Uh, but think, yeah, the third one felt more like the first one yeah, did. Yeah, I never thought and, it got a whole lot of credit just because no. it was kind of a blah movie. But Yeah, it, it was didn't the, have anything that really popped like no, the first one but it was did, the but, closest yeah. to the others. And they finally got, you know, the flying dinosaurs in there, which, yes. you know, I thought was cool because they needed something. Yeah. But it's better than Jurassic World yeah. and whatever. For that movie to have made the amount of money I, just because it was handsome McRock abs plus nostalgia. I, it just... Anytime they like thought they were gonna have like a build to a, like a legitimate dramatic moment, it, it undercut with a joke. It just yeah. It didn't feel like anything. It just it was like a Parks and Rec episode that had uh, Ron Howard's daughter in it. Yeah. Who cannot act? <laughs> she is terrible. She is flat the whole movie. She doesn't know how to emote anything with her vocal tones mm-hmm. at all. She just, everything sounds the same when it comes out of her mouth. It, it was awful. Yeah, yeah. It Ooh. had some cool visuals, you know, like a lot of those movies do, but that that's all you got. Right. Who, by the way, uh, Ron Howard just, apparently, apparently, I, I can't confirm this, but oh. I was looking, just stepped in as director. Yep. For this... Uh, Han Solo movie? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Not exactly comic book related. But, no. I, but still a thing. I don't know why. A Star Wars movie why they directed by him. Ron Howard. I think he's always expressed interest in him. Okay. But it's not like he has a lot of movies that really hit that kind of a genre. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Like, he's got some fantasy, you know, some comedy drama. But, like... Give him a shot. Sure. I don't I'm not a big Star Wars guy, so do do whatever you want. Plus it's a prequel movie. It's a prequel Han Solo movie. It's like, you know what? Everybody Young Indiana Jones was a thing too. You ever watch Young Indiana Jones? A couple. Yeah. 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 But I've already read the I had comics. I probably still do Young Indiana Jones comic books. Okay. Haha. <laughs> See, I I read a lot of Star Wars books including yeah. ones that were like, you know, Han Solo origins, like growing up stories and mm. adventures before. Just he... shoots a lot of people in bars and doesn't uh, understand no, what a parsec he, uh, he is. He goes to and... the Kessel Spice Mines in one of them. It's pretty sweet. Okay. Yeah, there's like a spice. The spice must flow. Yeah. Well, there is a spice monster. It's like a. It's like made of living uh, spice within the. You go Moadib and ride that. Oh yeah. Sucker through the desert. His eyes are blue by the end of it, baby. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> He is the Kwisatch Haderach. I, I love you. Beat, yeah, I was gonna say you got me beat on that one. Um, Spider Man, then. Okay. Spider Man. Thwip thwip. That was our transition. Spider Man. Spider Man does whatever a spider can. Okay, I'm gonna say this just because nobody at my work is is going to to ever listen to my podcast. Uh, so I write about coins for a living. 
oddly. I, I'm, I was a freelance writer and I ended up getting a contract gig at a company that sells coins and they really liked me and offered me money and a good deal to stay. Anyway. Did they offer coins? They did not. Oh. Nor would I have taken them. <laughs> um, but so there's a Spider-Man coin. There's a new Spider-Man homecoming coin. Big deal. You know, there's all sorts of things. There was even talk of Stanley signing some, but I don't know if that happened. Um, but anyway, uh, for the headline, it's so it's a silver coin with Spider-Man on it. I put does whatever a silver coin can. And multiple times I got notes back of people being like, I don't understand this. And it was like, you don't need to, because if you don't get it, you're not buying a Spider-Man coin. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, uh. I was like, who doesn't? Who doesn't know these things, you know? Yeah. Like, I, if, I, if I can't call him the web slinger, wall crawler, web head, just plain spidey, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, you know, like, come on. Yeah. Give me give me some latitude. I'm a comic nerd, and I actually finally get to write about something comic book and related. And that's specifically a character they did a lot of that kind of verbiage with. And oh, it was like, Stan Lee at his, yeah. having the most fun he can. Yeah. So, yeah, I... I if if you are buying a, or even if you're looking at that page yeah. and reading the blurb, yeah. you are interested in a Spider-Man coin right. and know a bit or two about it. Right. Or and, you're buying it for someone who And there's a does. couple that are out there and one of them is actually a print ad. And so I don't know what all magazines they're in, but if you see a magazine with a print ad in it um or maybe it's only for newspapers. I don't know. But I think we might do like USA Today and like Wall Street Journal or something like that. Okay. But if you see a thing, it's a big Spider-Man coin and it has that as a headline or something similar to it and uses all the different terms for Spider-Man in it, I wrote it. Feel free. Take a picture and, and send it to uh, us on Twitter at Comic Box Cast. I'd be interested. To see, I've never actually seen any of the things that I've made outside of in-house. Yeah. I've never actually seen it come back in a, in a thing. So that would be fun. All right. So Spider-Man Homecoming mm -hmm. is coming out. Uh, we've talked about the trailers before. We know the general plot seems to be he gets to keep the suit from Tony Stark that he got in Captain America Civil War. He then does something, it appears, tries to fight, I'm guessing, against the Vulture on a ferry and does his best to hold it together with a bunch of webs and it looks like it's going to be shot really cool. And then Iron Man shows up and saves the day, takes the suit away from him. Uh, the rest of the movie is him in his old, like, hoodie suit with just his goggles to try and block the light out because I guess he has light sensitivity when he's being Spider-Man, but not normally. I kind of hope they address that a little bit if it's just when he uses his powers or, or however they want to play it. Or maybe it's just swinging very quickly through New York City. That's a lot of wind in your eyes, but I don't think that's the point of the, the irises. It was something about sensitivity, I thought. Mm -hmm. Um and we know there's a plane involved and we know, you know, Batman is now the vulture and um, that's pretty much it for what we know. We know the suit and they, they try and hack into the suit to figure things out. Uh, I'm guessing a lot of that is all early in the movie. Yeah. You know, and the rest of maybe we'll see him get a suit at the end. Maybe they'll show an updated suit just to try and tease Infinity War. Maybe you know, he'll have the spider armor. And it'd be all chrome. Oh, man. The spider armor or the iron spider suit, which is in the comics, the only one that Tony Stark ever made for him, I believe, was the iron spider suit. Uh, or, I mean... That terrible one. Would they introduce a black suit? Knowing that Sony is doing its own standalone Venom oh, not connected to this movie? That'd be a movie? nice F you, but I don't know if that they would. Yeah. That would be a lot of And fun if they did it, I would hope they do it right. I honestly didn't mind... Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, mixing things up here, but I honestly didn't mind the black version of the suit we had in Spider-Man 3, just that it was a black version of the regular Spider-Man. Obviously, a, a Venom suit would have been cool, yeah. but I understood why they did it, because it was more visually contrasting of one versus the other. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I guess that's really all we know about this movie going in. Now, I want to talk the earlier Spider-Man movies and just Spider-Man film in general, but I also want to do a quick thing about the Vulture. Should I do that first? Sure. Because it is a prep episode. A prep episode. A prep episode. So I do want to at least get out some of the information. So in the comic books, and again, potential spoilers, but we don't know because we haven't seen the movie. But it's always fun to at least know a couple things you might run into. So in, in the comic books, the Vulture is a man named Adrian Toomes. And by all accounts, he's actually not that bad of a guy for most of his life he is 
uh, very smart and an engineer, and he's working on this flying harness. And his whole thing is his brother got into like a motorcycle accident and is paralyzed, so he takes care of his brother. I wouldn't be surprised if that kind of shows up in here. He talks about protecting family or something. I wouldn't be surprised if they try and throw a wrench in the works by showing that he's actually like a family man and he's doing the things he's doing, you know, for whatever. But he wasn't bitten by a radioactive vulture, you know, Uh Spider-Man tends to have other... the planet of vulture people. Right. Now, Spider-Man, I feel like, tended to have characters that either had special suits of armor and were named after animals. Yep. With Spider-Man's main villain. Or you might have people that had, you know, something to do with radiation and failed experiments kind of thing. Yep. Uh, this is definitely the formal, former. It's a man who invents technology. Or maybe we'll find out Steel's technology. If Iron Man is in this movie, I expect it has to do something with Stark. But in his origin, he was partners with somebody in a tech firm, and his partner was literally named Best Man or, or something. Here, I have it. I have it in my phone. Um, let's see. Adrian was raised by his older brother Marcus, who then became paraplegic, and he took care. Uh, yeah, Best Man. Oh, Gregory Bestman was his partner in this company, and then the idea is he's working on this harness, then finds out that Best Man has been like embezzling and stealing from him and ends up getting full control. So his whole thing is he works in private on his own suit and his deal is revenge. He's it's very much kind of like it's kind of like whiplash in Iron Man, the idea of you stole my technology, now I'm getting revenge on you. So his whole thing is very personally driven. I wouldn't be surprised if somehow um, if Gregory Bestman is in here, that he is more blatantly shown as the villain and maybe he caused Marcus to become, you know, paralyzed or maybe it has something to do with the Vulture's family. Uh, but that's kind of it in a nutshell. He has a big flying harness. Uh, he has super strength and the ability to fly and he upgrades his suit several times. Uh, there are some stories where like, he becomes friends with uh, a man who I, th I think is also in a, a wheelchair that, like, Aunt May was dating. And then, you know, that guy accidentally dies or, like, he visits the Vulture in prison. And there is there is some connection between the Vulture and Aunt May through an intermediary that they were both friends with. Um, but in general, it's he's an old bald guy who looks like a vulture in a big green winged suit. Wasn't there a story arc where he like stole someone's youth and he was young again? Yes. So that happens later on in his story because there's several times where he almost dies. And more than once, somebody else takes over the name Vulture and like either steals his tech or uses a different version of it. Uh, they And, you know, the reason he was turned younger and then got upgraded tech was just so he would look like the Vulture in the TV show who had a much more mechanized, didn't look like wings so much, okay. and was much younger. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember if the character in the show actually like got younger by like stealing people's youth or something like I that. I feel like that it was It kind of sounds thing. familiar, yeah. doesn't it? So as far as I know, not a normal um, vulture thing. Um, <laughs> to, to, yeah, I don't think actual vultures fly around stealing, stealing youth. youth. <laughs> um, final two things about the vulture. One, his first appearance was actually in Spider-Man number two. So he was the second villain ever that Spider-Man fought in the comic books uh, on his own. And uh, the other thing is right now in the comics, he's back, but he has taken the name of Falcon because he believed that the name Falcon was open to use because Falcon in the comics is now Captain America. I thought that was kind of funny. And I wouldn't be surprised if they... I feel like that's way too deep cuts and way too um, current. So it probably has nothing to do with the script when it was being written. But I would love if he's like, I am the Falcon. And somebody's like, no, you can't. That's that's taken. Yeah. Because they're going to have some levity. So knowing that in the history of the Vulture, here's my theory for this movie. Is the Vulture's not going to be necessarily a bad guy. Um He's just doing bad things for what he feels is the right reason, which is normal for a, a villain in any story. I just, but I don't think it's a, I'm evil because I'm evil kind of thing. I think there's going to be some sort of sympathetic angle, and I would love to see a situation wherein Spider-Man doesn't beat him just by beating him up. But from, like, the plane 
coming down and him trying to save an airplane and that sort of thing. I feel like maybe that is what we're going to end up seeing. Um, but I would think it would be a Tony Stark just wants to run in and blow everything up and, and save the, the day where Spider-Man's going to try and take maybe a, an angle that a younger person would take, which is why well, I don't want to get into a fight. Like, wh- no. Uh, and maybe he'll prove that there are other ways to solve problems or something. And then Tony Stark will be like, not bad, kid. Here's your suit back. Let's get to work. I'd love to see Spider-Man and the Vulture throw down in a good old-fashioned thumb war and, you know, lose or take all, you know, so. That would almost feel Spider-Man-y. Like, I really hope, the take they had on Spider-Man in Civil War was really good. I really hope they keep that very light. You get little touches of it in the trailers, but I really hope we never lose the bright and sunny Spider-Man, even when he's not feeling that way. it's He always tries to appear that way outward, A, to throw off his opponents, and B, just because that's the joy of Spider-Man, as somebody who... He is really a dichotomous character because it's this cross between loving being Spider-Man and swinging through the city and finding, you know, joy in that and the crushing burden of responsibility that comes with being Spider-Man and the number of times he goes super angsty and tries to quit. I really hope we don't get that Spider-Man in this movie. If I see a spider suit anywhere near a garbage can, yeah, I'm exactly. Yeah, very disappointed. Spider-Man, no more. <sighs> Yeah, I I think after, you know, like Guardians and just the success of these movies that are a little brighter, um, that that would be the the way Kevin Feige, guy who's sort of running the Marvel Cinematic Universe, would be like, keep it light. Because that's going to keep people coming back to the next one. Yeah. Um, And then just hopefully we're not really going to have to deal with an origin story. We're not going to have to see Uncle Ben get shot again. (laughs) Who would you cast as Uncle Ben this time around to to pair off? With uh, Marissa Tomei. Oh, um, I don't know. Because there's somebody else playing J. Jonah Jameson in this one too, right? Which is just... Yeah. I don't remember who who they have this time. Yeah, I forget. But I, the last guy was perfect. Because he was the voice of Spider-Man on the cartoon. It was it was beautiful. Yeah. It was a match made in heaven. Who should play Spider Uncle Ben? Sam Raimi. <laughs> <laughs> I think he won't look the part. But I think that'll I think that'll do it for a lot of people I, to I see the guy funny. who the guy who did the Spider Man three Toby Maguire jazz dance scene <laughs> dies as Uncle Ben. <laughs> I'd like to see uh, Ben Affleck. I think he could do an Uncle yeah. Ben, and you'd yeah. get to see him get gunned down in yeah. a comic book movie, and he'd get to be a little tongue in cheek about it, maybe you know. Yeah, yeah, he'd be like, "Guns, I hate guns." Yeah. Except when I use them to kill people. Though we did talk about wear that the dark week. shades like he had in Daredevil. Yeah. You know? like, <laughs> Why didn't I see it coming? He, he and Aunt May have a uh, karate fight on a playground. I was gonna say on the play on the yeah on the seesaw. Okay. All right. So let's talk Spider Man in cinema. Now you say you've seen all of them. I debate this because there was a Spider Man made for TV movie in the seventies. Yes. Yeah, Beyond. Where they where they do reverse filming of a rope. Yeah, they being do. Being slung through a wristband to make... That's the only way he shoots a web, is he just puts his hand out and a giant rope flies out. It's terrible. Okay, what about the... What was it? The Pakistani Spider-Man... Where Spider-Man is <laughs> okay, evil, I don't think I've fighting seen against Captain Spider-Man. America. Okay. I've seen clips. <laughs> yeah, I've seen We will clip. watch that movie. Let's say Ooh. it's July. We will find it. I'm sure we'll have to download it. Sorry, internet, and people who don't believe in downloading Sorry, movies. Sorry, FBI. But I, yeah, I don't know. how the, yeah. Pakistan. <laughs> but... But yeah, we will watch the weird foreign spot. I'll bet Luke has it. Oh, I bet anybody. our friend Luke has it. Yeah, where it's like Captain America versus an evil Spider-Man who has a giant robot. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Though there might have been a Japanese Spider-Man live action show where he had a giant robot. Maybe oh, I'm getting the two mixed up. I'm not saying that there's not both. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But yes, we will watch that and do a review or... I guess it wouldn't make sense to do a commentary track because nobody else is going to get their hands on it. We'd just be too hard, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do that at 25 reviews. Okay, so we've seen Spider-Man. You know, we watched the Spider-Man and his amazing friends in the, in the 1990s Fox Kids Spider-Man show. Um, did you ever watch Spider-Man Unlimited? Uh, it's where they combined the Spider-Man story with actually the story of Adam Warlock where he goes to Counter-Earth that is being run by the Man Beast, and he gets a suit that looks kind of like Spider Man twenty ninety nine. I don't think I did see that one. It's it's out there. Okay, it's out there, and it was super heavy on the inks, like the nineties um, X Men cartoon. Mm-hmm. It had a very similar animation style, uh, and then obviously there was all the different um, 
you know, Spectacular Spider-Man, Ultimate Spider-Man, uh, cartoons and stuff. But mm-hmm. I guess we should stick with live action. I don't know why I brought them up. It was to feel superior because I've seen them all. Um, <laughs> though I don't know if I watched all of the MTV Spider-Man. There was a Spider-Man CG cartoon on MTV yeah, that was. I guess people really liked. Was it Was it Neil Patrick Harris as Peter Parker? I think you're in right. In that one? Yeah. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Anyway. Um, Which is the only reason people would re- like something that aired on MTV and was Spider-Man related. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Um, so I think the big question, and the big question for non-comic book fans, so our, our listeners out there that sort of watch the movies, but that's kind of as far as they go, is why are we getting Spider-Man rebooted for like the third time in a decade? Uh, well, it's the rights transfer issue from you know Sony over to Fox uh or Marvel Marvel yeah yeah cuz Marvel's its own uh, thing now Disney yeah. yeah so that that that's the main reason why we're why we have a new revitalization but they had to ask for that though like Sony had yeah. the, had the rights Sony still retains the rights cuz yeah. they're they're splitting it so Sony gets the money for like merchandising or something uh, or maybe it's the other way around. Sony gets the no, that wouldn't make sense because it's going to be a Marvel film. Yeah. So Marvel Studios would get, you know, distribution and box office, I guess, and then Sony gets licensing or something like that. Yeah. Um. Either way, they're all going to go to bed on stacks of gold coins. Yeah. Struck with the image of Spider-Man. <laughs> um. But. I think it was that Marvel had to ask. I don't know if Sony came to them. I would assume Marvel was like, "Hey, so." How are those amazing Spider-Man movies working out for you? I think I remember hearing it was a, a case where they wanted to keep the rights, but then they are, their movies tanked, yeah. and they realized that it would probably be more profitable for them to just get rid of it because they weren't able to do something as popular as what you know Marvel was could doing. become. You know, right? So. Uh, and obviously they got paid for it. So oh, yeah. So it's not like they're just like, okay, you can have it. You know? And then they're banking off of it by doing these weird split-off movies of a Black Cat, Silver Sable movie, and a Venom movie. There was supposed to be a Sinister Six movie that I think was going to be in the Amazing Spider-Man universe. Okay. Uh, that... I think you're right, because they set up the Rhino at the end of the second oh, one. with Paul Giamatti? With Paul Giamatti. As the Rhino? <laughs> uh, I always look at him sideways now. Yeah. I get it. Mm-hmm. Because sideways, yeah, I liked him in The Illusionist. That's probably my favorite role of his oh, ever. See, I I think he's quite good in The Negotiator. He just gets to be like whiny, kind of you know Paul Giamatti. Gotcha. Yeah, he he's a uh, uh, a hostage in a hostage situation, you know, being held by uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Ah, so yeah. well, that would be. It's fun. a fun movie. I yeah. I would I would recommend yeah. it. <laughs> Uh, but so Spider-Man movies, uh, we have the, and I guess, do we need to really break it down? Do you think for people that don't know? I mean, we always just assume because we're nerds and geeks that everybody knows what we know. Yeah. Uh, because to us, it's normal everyday conversation. Yeah. So when most people talk about the Spider-Man movies, they're talking about the three directed by Sam Raimi that starred Tobey Maguire, yes. which was just Spider-Man, Spider-Man and 2, Kirsten and, Dunst. and Kirsten Dunst, and Spider-Man 3. They have no... Other titles, there's no subtitles or anything. The first one is he fights the Green Goblin, played by Willem Willem Dafoe, Dafoe, um, who I love. Not so much, I don't think they really nailed Green Goblin. They did what they could, but you could tell it was still people trying to figure it out. I thought Spider-Man was done pretty well. And I will say, I really did, as much as he looked like a 40-year-old dude in high school, I really thought uh, Tobey Maguire was a great Peter Parker. And we did get those awesome Spider-Man games as a result of those early Spider-Man We did, which brings us to Spider-Man 2 which wasn't really based on the movie, was its own thing, had uh, Bruce Campbell as a narrator in the game, which was phenomenal. Yep. And you had Alfred Molina as uh, Dr. Octopus. Yeah. And I would argue that might be... Uh, it's in a lot of people's top five comic book movies. It changes a little now with the Marvel films. Mm-hmm. But for the longest time, it was like you had X-Men 2 or just X2. Yep. Um, X-Men United, right? And Spider-Man 2, because Spider-Man 2, just front to back, is a really good movie. It's got the camp and the humor and the heart, and Alfred Molina kills it as yep. Dr. Octopus. And, um, I mean, that the whole train scene where they're like, oh my god, he's just a kid, and that's like, 
they did such a good job with that movie. It makes yep. me want to go watch it right now. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's my good. favorite of the, that trilogy of yeah. Spider-Man. And then Spider-Man 3, everybody, including the director, sort of admits that it kind of tanked at that point. <laughs> they, tried <to> do, <laughs> they tried to do Venom, and they tried to do uh, a New Goblin was the name that they gave to it. Uh, to to uh, Harry Osborn sort of taking up the Green Goblin mantle, but not really. It's more like a flying snowboard thing and kind of a good guy. And then it also had the Sandman, and they redid the origin where the Sandman killed Uncle Ben, which is like making the Joker kill Batman's parents. I don't like it. It, it changes the whole point of the character. Yeah. When it's one specific person, superpowered or not, that did it. Now it's a revenge story versus an overarching lesson about uh, responsibility, or in Batman's case, an overarching is it arcing or arching? It doesn't matter. Uh, a wide, uh, just lesson about crime in general, because the whole thing of Batman is just stopping street level crime that doesn't get enough attention and making sure no child ever has to grow up without their parents. Uh, that changes when it's just one person you can blame for it. Though they kind of do it with Joe Chill and Batman. Getting sidetracked. Uh, so we have those Spider-Man movies, and the third one is sort of universally panned. Yeah. I feel like if I went back and watched it in the right frame of mind, though, I, w- I might actually have fun with some of it. Because you have to keep in mind, Spider-Man's always been kind of a silly character. So the idea that Peter Parker would suddenly go emo and do a jazz <sighs> dance thing... I hate that scene so I, but much. But think about it. If you're looking at, like... The 1960s Spider-Man. Is that a thing that early Peter Parker would do? Maybe. You know? I feel like it would be more of a I'm your density, you know, uh, uh, McFly dancing at the looking really nerdy dancing. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's very much a Peter Parker surrogate is George McFly in Back to the Future. Okay. So I feel like there could be some dancing. I just don't know that it would necessarily have been the jazz dance. But it was... The movie knew what it was doing. And then it totally didn't. You Taking know, like it knew they, they were making... He gets the suit and the suit makes him emo. And so we're going to kind of make fun of this whole teen emo thing. And then they try and do a big action piece. And it just suffered from the same thing all of those trilogies did, which is too many villains, too many plot lines. You're doing too much. You're supposed to... You know, first movie is introduce the character, origin story, make us care. Second movie is always the best because we get a straightforward story. We already know the characters, so now we can do some really good development and storytelling without being bogged down by an origin. And, and the third like movie Hugh is Jackman uses claws. Yeah, and third one is supposed to be back to basics. You know, something happens to the character where they need to rediscover themselves because they've gotten too big or. Or, or Richard whatever. Pryor writes some computer code. That's right. And they're trying to scam, you know, micro pennies on. That's right. right. You know. Superman can't stop computers. No. Nope. Can't stop the signal. No. Nope. Clark. <laughs> uh, and then we got the Amazing Spider Man movies, which I have not seen. But this is a separate, totally separate thing. So when people talk about Spider Man versus the Amazing Spider Man, I know that's confusing. Is Sony decided to reboot the Spider Man franchise with Andrew Garfield as Spider Man? And they did, and I, it was just Amazing Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man 2, right? Yeah. Okay, there were no subtitles. I don't think there was a subtitle to that second one, no. So the first one he fights... Uh, it is the Green Goblin again. Is it? No, no, that's the second one. I thought the second one he fights Electro. Yeah, he's also in it. But they do bring the Green Goblin back. Oh. Uh, oh who was it in the first oh, one? They have the Harry Osborn. Oh, it was the, the Reptile. Okay. Yeah. And it Dr. Was, Kirk um, Connors, the lizard. Yeah, I think it was Dylan Baker. Okay. No, he was in the... Yeah, I, I forget who that one was. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, it's been a few years since I've actually watched it. And, it was yeah, so good. Like, yeah. it, when it came out on DVD, it's like when I watched it. Because, right. you know, again, I'm not a huge Spider-Man fan. It's just kind of like, a, oh, yeah. well, we'll see how this compares to those Tobey Maguire ones. And, sure. And I like um, the idea of the lizard as a villain, but yeah. I imagine they didn't quite... I think the best thing that they did was that they used Gwen Stacy as opposed to using Mary, Mary Jane, Jane again. Right. You know, um, and the, it was that early... It was still... It was more of a high school mm-hmm. Peter Parker, but, you know, Andrew Garfield was a little aged out of high school by that point, you know? Okay. So it didn't feel quite as... You know, normal like like with this homecoming movie, the the actor playing him is 
like 18, 19. He certainly yeah. looks young enough to be, you know, right. a 16, 17 year old, you know, right. whereas Andrew Garfield, not quite so much. Sure. Um, so yeah, I, I think that was probably one of the best things that they did was that they used Gwen Stacy. And I think that went a long way towards revitalizing that character in the, just the Marvel universe was like, they had, you know, Gwen Stacy, you know, comes back and like they have Gwen pool now and, yeah, you know, like, yeah. Uh, Spider Gwen, and, yep. you know, so uh, I I think that the the that second movie or that you know first movie uh, helped to bring that Gwen Stacy character back. Sure. The the second one was garbage. It was Jamie Fox as like an almost autistic level like Asperger's kind of guy, mm. you know, who was like very very uh, scientifically driven. Like he, he or uh, I mean, he's just like a like a real nerdy kind of like compulsive kind of guy you know and he wants spider-man to come to his birthday and <laughs> that's right we talked about this. yeah, yeah. He, and he doesn't he didn't go to his and that's it and that's yeah. your plot and then he gets like electric powers by falling into a Le- vat better electric, electric eels. eels yeah we talked about oh, this yeah it's just it's so bad and yeah then yeah then they bring the green goblin back and the way they make him look is just ridiculous it's mm. like he's like feral looking like his teeth are actually pointed and he's got like weird makeup effects and it's just it's like he's growing scales sort of and it's he it just looks ridiculous so and that brings us to now so this spider-man outside of captain america civil war which was the captain america 3 the most recent captain america movie we have never seen this version of spider-man before uh, so this is Tom Holland. So he's going to be our, for our sake of argument, we'll say the third live action it's Spider-Man because way. the rest yeah. of them are decades ago. Um, and it looks like he's nailed the character more than some of the other actors. And I think a big part of that is just casting a young actor. Um, the fact that he is using a Queen's accent to play the character. Um, and while I thought... Like I said, I thought Tobey Maguire did a great job as as Peter Parker. Um, this kid feels like a kid. I don't quite feel that he's that nerdy of a kid. Every time we see him, he's wearing like a, a, a t-shirt, um, a graphic tee, as they're known, I guess, by the kids now, and buying on the websites, mm-hmm. on using the internet's webs. All these millennials. Yeah, wearing you know t-shirts with funny science sayings on them. So I hope we get, you know, outside of him just being very smart, I hope we get a little more of him just being ultra nerded out because clearly we're not getting the sweater vest and glasses mm-hmm. Peter Parker of the 60s. Because they gave us a little, like, he was able to figure out some of that tech on his own right. when they introduced him. Mm-hmm. And now in this, you know, certainly in the clips, like, it's him and a buddy who are, like, trying to hack this computer within the suit, you know? Right. Yeah. So it seems like it's not just he is a whiz at everything, but he certainly has proficiency. And know? friends. Yeah. Nerds have nerd friends. Exactly. Geeks have geek friends. Yeah. Um, so, with what we've seen, and after five other Spider-Man movies in our lifetime. In the last, certainly the last two decades. Yeah. yeah. What do you need most? Well, I guess, first of all, do you want another spider We're getting it, but would See, you have said you wanted another Spider-Man movie? I w- I'm not champing at the bit for it because I'm not, like, a huge Spider-Man fan to begin with. Mm-hmm. But he is, like, one of the tent poles of the comic book industry. Yeah. You know, certainly on the Marvel side of things. Um, so it's kind of to be expected that he needs to be there, you know? Sure. So just to have him in the fold... I, I'm glad for that. I'm like it. It feels more like a united Marvel universe as mm-hmm. opposed to here's this version of the Marvel universe. Here's that. Here's this. You know. Um, so I, I'm glad for it, but it's not a movie necessarily for me. I mean, it's maybe skewing a little younger than you and I are, even right. if we are comic nerds. You know. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's trying to get that next generation of comic book nerds going. So I'm I'm for that because yeah, comic books and are I a lot agree. Of fun. And here's the fun thing that I think nobody is really considered at this point, as far as the comic book industry is concerned, and the Marvel comics movies in particular. This is the first A-lister 
that's actually getting their own movie through the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Captain America, generally speaking, while he is synonymous with the Avengers, and there's like the Ed Brubaker run and that sort of thing. But in my mind, he is not considered an A-lister. You have Wolverine, Spider-Man, and like... The Hulk? The, maybe, you know? Yeah. As far as, as people that really know... And we haven't had a Ruffalo... Uh, yeah, no, that'll standalone be standalone Hulk. No, he's yeah. just going to be in in Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, because was the the Edward Norton's uh, performance was that the first like MCU movie? Yeah, so you yeah. had Iron Man, and my understanding is the Samuel L. Jackson thing was shot after test screenings, and they realized that they could actually do what they hoped they might do, and be like, yeah, screw it, let's do it, let's go for broke yeah. and they did the I'm here to talk to you about the Avengers and then after that they went and did um, Hulk Iron Man, yeah. yeah and Iron Man 2 um, but yeah I mean because normally when people think comic books in general Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman Wolverine, Spider-Man that's pretty much it like yeah. Marvel doesn't in general have a lot of A-listers I guess obviously that is changing now I would say Captain America and Iron Man you know yeah, the, the yeah if you're talking and, like tentpole icon characters of the from, industry uh, there's Superman yeah. on the DC side yeah and there's Spider-Man on the, the yes. Marvel side my understanding is he's actually the most profitable oh yeah superhero or something of the last thing, decade baby. you know it's there's just primary colors yeah people love primary colors uh, cheery and you know yep. like yeah and I remember Wizard did their top costumes of all time thing, and mm-hmm. I believe Spider-Man got number one because they keep changing it, but they always end up changing it back. And I think number mm-hmm. two is Captain America yeah, because also they've changed his costume many times, but he always goes back to that classic American flag because it was such a wonderful design. I think mm-hmm. Kirby. Um, oh, and I believe Spider-Man was John Romita Sr. Mm-hmm. Or no, Steve Ditko. Yeah. It was those were the two guys that were the main artists on it, but it was uh, Ditko, I think, that um, that designed it. So, I think, you know, I'm with you. I think it makes sense. I think it really helps the MCU. It makes it feel bigger, just even with the inclusion of one other character. Yeah, really seems to. But it's a big absence otherwise. And it's yes, yeah. you feel an absence of Spider-Man in the Marvel universe mm-hmm. with that. Um, what is the one thing then? as we're getting kind of close on time here, what is the one thing that you want out of this new Spider-Man movie? Having, and again, this is from the point of view of having seen five other live action Spider-Man movies. What is the one thing you want out of this one that you didn't get out of the others? Mainly just the, the fun factor, you know, cause like I don't have high expectations for Spider-Man cause I didn't really read Spider-Man. I don't really care about Spider-Man that much. I just watched, you know, all the movies and cartoon shows and, you know, um, so I just want the movie to be enjoyable you know, and not take itself too seriously. Cause I think uh, some of these last ones, uh, certainly the Tobey Maguire ones, uh, took themselves a little too seriously. Yeah. They start especially fun. Especially the third one. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they, they start fun, you know, with yep. like, I like the scene of him trying to figure out how to shoot. Cause that Spider-Man had organic web so they could just not bother with him trying to create web shooters yeah. and running out of web fluid and all that um where they have the scene of him just being like fly yeah go shazam and he's just trying all these different like hand movements and can't figure out how he shot webs yeah um you know i liked the the levity there and i agree i really hope that this is a guardians of the galaxy you know you can have some sad moments but it should be big and bright and fun yeah um and sort of the epitome of what the marvel cinematic universe can do yeah uh and i think there is always that because he is the wise cracking right Spider-Man. like he he yeah. is not meant to be like serious somber mm-hmm. you know like burr, burr, dirt all the time like a little little flex of that after a whole bunch of things have built up to being overwhelming for him, you know? Right. And I just, I think there's always the, um, not desire, the temptation to go either dark or just very emotional. And, uh, that was my problem with the Spider-Man television show. If you watch like the last season of the, and I don't know if it's the last, it's the last I remember is they started doing all this interdimensional stuff and he screams in every episode. It's always Mary Jane in mm-hmm. every episode. And I want to say they actually like, she falls through a portal 
and they just like abandoned that storyline or something. I'd have to look up and see that, but it was something where they were doing all this dark stuff and then just ignored it and moved on with the show. Um, they never actually solve what happens to Mary Jane. She's just gone. Um, but when they get to, you know, like his, he's supposed to, the whole idea is he's having fun, whatever, but it's like, oh, but don't forget, it's okay to enjoy all of this, but having this is also a responsibility. So I, I would be remiss if there wasn't a great power, great responsibility, but I think we got that already in uh, Civil War, where we know that this version of Peter Parker really, really wants to help people. Mm -hmm. And I feel that that's actually perfect for today's young people that are so politically active and are getting out and doing things. It's like they don't necessarily have all of the information, but the idea is they just want to do something. They want to be important. They want to be heard. They want to help. And I think working that into this Peter Parker, and I think if that's just inherently in there, then maybe we don't need to get the really dark, like, you're not supposed to help, you know. You can't be on the football team, Rudy, but I, I want it. I just try so hard. Just put me in, coach. Yeah. I, I, I don't need a lot of that. I'm okay with a little bit, so long as it's really well balanced out with the rest of the, the humor. But yeah, I'm... I don't know if it's sad to say I, I kind of have high expectations for the movie and I don't want to. I want to go in with absolutely zero expectations. So I'm either blown away or not very let down. But I am a big Spider-Man fan. I still have no idea why I never watched the other two. I guess they just didn't look like they were going to be amazing. But Spider-Man's the only comic I... But they I, put amazing right in the title. It's true. It's true. Uh, they can't call it that if it's not. Otherwise, it's, it's false, false advertising. advertising. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like Cedric the Entertainer. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> False advertising. Um, but yeah, because Spider-Man was the only comic I ever had an in-home male subscription to growing up. Um, and I couldn't tell you what it was about Man, Spider-Man. that's a I thing just, they used to do. Right? You'd actually <laughs> cut it out of a comic book. Yeah. You had to ruin your comic to get more comics, but you got more comics. Yeah. So it worked out. Yeah. Um, but and yeah, you check I, off all the ones that you wanted to have them send. Right. Yeah. But yes, I, I hope that it's it's light. Now, we know Spider Man's going to be in Infinity War because everybody's in Infinity War, and whatever happens after that. How many of these movies do we need? Do you want? Now okay. we haven't seen it yet, so this will be a conversation we'll have to have again once we've seen the movie. But mm. it's like, how many more standalone Spider Man movies do yeah, we want? Yeah, I have a feeling they're at least signing Tom Holland up for a trilogy. Yeah. I, it, well, it's hard to have any movie not go for a trilogy nowadays. Which is like, annoying. It really is. If you is. have a good story to tell, you can tell one story. Yeah. But keep in mind with comic books... Ridley Scott. <laughs> but keep in mind with uh, uh, with comic books, the nature of their stories is serialization. Mm -hmm. Of telling multiple stories with very archetypal characters that you can throw into any situation and get something out of. Yeah. You know, like a sitcom. You know, all the sitcoms have the same three storylines over and over again but you work with the characters to... and every once in a while a puffy shirt yes every once in a while a puffy shirt um i i not having seen it i guess i'm okay i just sort of see it as an inevitability yeah exactly you know uh and marvel continuing to build up their universe like and honestly i know you get the arguments of well why didn't they just call in the hulk to do everything kind of arguments i really i it's like this. I love that they're in a shared universe and every once in a while get together. Mm -hmm. I really prefer the individual stories. You know, maybe have an actor pop up in the other one every once in a while. But it's just the sense that you're in a universe. Yeah. You know, I like an Ant-Man. I like that a lot. Yeah. When it's just like, oh, there's the Falcon for a moment. You know? So it kind of felt like, who can we actually afford? Yes. Is was the Falcon. Yeah. Next time, baby. Yeah. Um, oh, God. That's a good drop. Um, but like with in the Netflix universe, you know, I could maybe use a little more out of it or like in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I could use a little more integration to make me feel like you're in the, the same universe. But it's a thing like show me in Spider-Man because he's almost sort of ground level. You know, he swings yeah. above it, but he's not cosmic. Yeah. He's not flying over the city. Give he's... me a reference to the devil of Hell's Kitchen. Just, just have someone say it, or show me a newspaper that he walks by. Yeah, you know, give me if you give me J. Jonah Jameson at the Daily Bugle and do that whole, you know, Spider Man, get me photos of Spider Man kind of thing. Like, have because it's the Bulletin or something that they use in the Netflix shows. I think right, mm -hmm. uh, the New York Bulletin and uh, Ben Urich, who 
who I believe was a uh, Daily Bugle um, I believe you're right. newspaper reporter in the comic books, but obviously they didn't know they had Spider Man at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, give me. It'd be great Something if he like just that. like lands on a rooftop and there's Daredevil for a second, and you just like they see each other, and then he like runs off. In a Spider-Man movie, yes. In any other Marvel movie, I would say no. But yeah. if we're going for the light and fun in Spider-Man, absolutely. Yeah. Otherwise, because that's know, what I've always wanted in a comic book movie. It's just yeah. a drop-in cameo from some other character, like right. in like in the Catwoman movie, like just to have a silhouette of Batman like go over the sky. Or I would you say know? even Batman and Suicide Squad. I mean, I could use a little less of Batman and Suicide Squad even, but the idea that he's just there when the, when Joker and Harley Quinn get caught and that's it. Perfect. Cause it's not a Batman movie. Yeah. It's not a movie about Batman. It's like the, uh, the Joker graphic novel that Brian Azzarello did. Did you ever read this? I read pieces of it. I think loosely based off of, uh, the Joker character from the dark Knights, the idea of, of him getting out. And so it's this sort of alternate world sort of thing. Um, and Batman is just treated as like this boogeyman who doesn't show up until the very, very end. That's right. You yeah. know, because they're just prepared or you see shadows or, you know, because yeah. that's the whole thing of the criminals in Gotham is they're still dumb enough to like not head to Iowa and do crime. Like they're still yeah. doing crime in Gotham, but they're constantly afraid of moving shadows. Yeah. You know, and, and that every, was one thing. Every thought, sound might be that cape swoosh. That exactly. is the last one you hear. And that is the the absolute opposite of that's the antithesis of Spider Man, mm-hmm. you know the fact that he has the spider light that he shines on people, which I always thought was weird. Uh, out of all of his gadgets, he shines yeah. a big Spider Man face on you. But yes, in Spider Man, I would be okay uh, with a short cameo. But even just the idea that if he's just in the neighborhoods, be like, you know, oh, where is it? We're gonna go to this movie theater for a old movie, you know, film festival because all nerds like silent movie festivals. Um, I'm rolling my eyes as I say that I like silent films, but it's that sort of, oh, you must be eccentric. So we're going to go see a Buster Keaton festival kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but they're like, oh, but it's in hell's kitchen. They're like, screw that. Did you hear what happened to that place? Yeah. All all the explosions or, you know, a note about the Punisher or whatever the heck was going on at Rand is, you know, I want to hear Tony Stark say something about Rand industries or whatever it was. You know, yeah. that type of thing. Because we don't need to know anything about Luke Cage, unless you do, unless there's something you say something about Harlem. Yeah. Show me Spider Man in Harlem as Peter Parker doing something in Harlem and somebody walks by with a bullet hole hoodie. That would be sweet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those are the touches. Or Matt Murdock with the stick. You yeah, know? walking by. But yeah. just Or even Foggy. Yeah, you know? Give me Foggy Nelson. Yeah. Yeah. Just Toss in Foggy just eating a sandwich in walking the background. Past, exactly. Because you know? the idea is Make me feel the universe without having to show me and spend millions of dollars yes. to make it happen. Yes. Okay. So those are the things we want from Spider-Man. Because um, they'll do that in panels of comic books and stuff all the time. You know, yeah. like and it, just you're one just little like, blip. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But I think we're both, at least in part for you. I know you're not crazy, but I think we're both looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, and it's on my birthday. Oh, is it? Yeah, July 7th. Well, that's fun. We'll have to go and um, do a thing then. Well, you're having a shindig. The next day. The next day. Okay. Well, I'm going to need to go and see this, probably opening day for the podcast. Mm-hmm. So you're... I'm probably not doing anything that day. Cool. Yeah. Then maybe maybe we'll go and, and get that knocked out. And again, I always say I'd love to have Dr. Ray. I like having three of us on here for a movie review, but Ray in particular because he is a huge Spider-Man fan, both he, he and, his, and his sister too. Yeah. Really big... He's uh, read so much more Spider-Man than I ever have. Yeah. Yeah. And I've read a good amount but it's a lot of my own stuff which is random comics i got from the library growing up Mm -hmm. you know uh random stories where i'm like i don't know what's happening like i have the comic where he fights the tri-sentinel which was a a character in a comic book it's a sentinel i have the spider armor one just because i was at the comic book shop and i was like wow look at that shiny cover yeah you know and so i got it nice yeah and there's all sorts of stuff in it it's like midway through several arcs and i'm like i don't have no I, who are these characters and what are they doing but yeah hey he's wearing armor for half of it and then he gets busted off and he never wears it again you know what i'm gonna recant what i said earlier <laughs> uncle ben stan lee give him a cameo that's an actual character he gets shot he dies and it's stan lee's final cameo in a marvel movie. okay i'm okay with that last because he bit. created the character yeah he gets to give him the line otherwise he's gonna be you know something that really takes you out of the movie <sighs> but again in a Spider-Man movie, I'm okay with it. 
don't break the fourth wall exactly. Don't do, you know, the the Deadpool yeah. level of breaking the fourth wall. But yeah, where he says something like, I like the webs under the the arms. That was, you know, part of the whole the glider mm-hmm. webs. Anyway, okay. So final thoughts before uh next week. Next week, finger quotes. We're recording this a couple, you know, few days early. Yeah. Um but final thoughts before we go uh see Spider Man or for anybody else, anything you'd want them to look out for or um we're all excited for Game of Thrones coming down the pike. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> great. I'm gonna consider that the end of the at the end of the issue then. This has been issue fifty five. Issue. Issue. I said it right I this know. time. Issue fifty five of the comic box. Liam, thank you for joining me. Of course. Uh where can we find you online? I'm on the Facebooks. Yes. I'm on the Reddit, Irish yes. underscore Mutt. Uh, yeah. And Steam. And Steam. Crotch and Iblet. Because Steam sale is going on. Oh, 37 items on my list are on sale. I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to spend a penny. I looked at some of the big things that are out, but I just, you know. Dishonored 2. It's only like 20 bucks right now. I'm probably going to get that one. That's still 20 bucks for a video game. Buy video games when they're like $3 or less. I want to play Super Hot, but I want it to be like $6. Yeah. Because I hear. There's several that are like under $5 that I'm probably going to snap up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I have five dollars in my Steam wallet right now, so it's like I'm too I'm too frugal because I have games I have that I haven't played yet, yep. and I know too many people that just load their their Steam with all of these cheap games. And granted, they're cheap. That's me. But then you don't touch them. That's me. Nah, play through. Make a I list. I played a, and, and a do lot it. of them, but there's still a few here and there that yeah. I haven't played. Because I did finally start Arkham Origins. Oh yeah. I didn't even. I suppose that would have been my one geekery thing. Yeah. I played that a little bit. It's fun. It's it's fine. Yeah. It just feels like more Arkham. Yeah. So. Cool. I'm not spending a lot of time doing the Riddler things or anything. I think I'm just going to plow through the game. Yeah. Call it good and move on to Arkham Knight. Because I bought that too. Mm-hmm. Last time there was a Steam sale. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so next week, Spider-Man review episode. Uh, thank you again, Liam. Uh, we're part of the geek to geek podcast network. geek to geekcastcom I believe, is where uh, all of the shows live now. You can find us on Facebook if you search geek to geek podcast or geek to geek podcast network. You can find us on Reddit, reddit.com forward slash r forward slash geek to geek cast. You can send us a message at uh, on Twitter at comic box cast or Gmail the comic box podcast at gmail.com. So many places where you can find us. It's basically whatever social media you use. You can find us. We're haunting you. We are. Yes, but I'm usually active. I try and post on Facebook every once in a while. And then Twitter, usually. I mean, generally through my personal Twitter. But I always keep an eye out when people send messages or post and and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, thwip, thwip. Take us out, Liam. Thwip, thwip. It wasn't very Spider-Man-y, but it was... Oh, what was the Spider-Man from the 90s? It was just like... Blah, 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 blah. You know, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, yeah. radioactive Spider-Man. See, and like that was it. in me. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't much of a theme song. It, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Yeah. That's, that's the theme. Yeah. Do you remember the theme for like Spider-Man and his amazing friends off the top of your head? No. Neither do I. No. Neither do I. But I had the VHS of the special episode where he got together with a bunch of other superheroes and they totally did a and then there were none style episode. Okay. Uh, where it was Namor and uh, Doctor Strange and it had the, the famous line that Wizard would use every once in a while of Namor flying out of, uh, of a pool. He gets into a pool and then he flies back out and he goes, this isn't water, it's alcohol. <laughs> awesome. Like... Super awesome. When I saw that in a Wizard magazine making that joke and I knew exactly what they were referencing because it was one of the, like, two tapes I had of Spider-Man and his (laughs) amazing friends. Yeah. Nice.